This is Max, the editor. The manuscript that I'm working from is pretty vague on Falkewolf. Some of these Falkewolf aircraft are poorly documented, and it's really hard to get any straight information. For example, there are three different aircraft that are labeled as Falkewolf Project 1. Here's the earliest one. Falkewolf Project 1 fighter. This was the first of a series of designs from Falkwolf in 1942 for a single-seat, single-jet engine day fighter. This aircraft design featured 30-degree swept forward wings and a V-tail. The turbojet was mounted on top of the fuselage behind the cockpit in the manner of a Heinkel 162. Several versions were designed, among them one with a Junkers UMO 004 turbojet, and one with a BMW 003 jet engine. Armament was to be two MK-108 30mm cannons and two MG-151 15mm machine guns. Span, 26 feet 11.1 inches. Length, 34 feet 5.7 inches. Maximum speed, 578 miles per hour with the Junkers UMO 004. Falkewolf Single Jet Fighter Projects, 1943 to 1945. Commencing in March 1943, Falkewolf designed a series of single jet fighters. The first of these had a Junkers UMO 004 jet unit slung beneath the nose. The undercarriage is of orthodox type, and the main plane and empennage are very similar to those of the FW 190. The cockpit is forward of the leading edge. Span, 34 feet 5 inches. Length, 33 feet 11 inches. Crew, 1. Armament, 2 or 4 MG 151 20 millimeters. Maximum speed, unknown. The next project still has the jet unit under the fuselage, but further back, and a tricycle undercarriage is fitted. There is fairly pronounced taper on the leading edge, and the trailing edge is straight. Span, 31 feet 10 inches. Length, 32 feet 4 inches. Height, 14 feet 6 inches. Wing area, 161.46 square feet. Maximum speed, at sea level, 528 miles per hour. Maximum speed at 39,370 feet, 485 miles per hour. Rate of climb at sea level, 66 feet per second. Range, 398 miles. Service ceiling, 40,682 feet. In November 1943, a different solution was sought by placing the jet unit above instead of below the fuselage. It is mounted behind the cockpit, and there is a projecting intake on each side of the nose. In order to avoid interference with the jet stream, twin fins and rudders are employed. A little later, a twin-boom interceptor fighter was designed, still with a turbojet unit above the fuselage. Two bi-fuel liquid rocket motors are mounted side by side beneath the jet tailpipe. The tailplane is placed above the twin fins and rudders. To provide the space necessary for the rocket fuel, the fuselage is very broad.
At the beginning of 1944, a design was prepared very similar to that ultimately adopted for the TA-183, except that the wing is of considerably longer cord. A bifuel rocket is mounted above the tailpipe of the HE-011 turbojet unit. The next design is of the twin boom type with high tailplane and a very long nose. The HE-011 jet is mounted in the rear of the fuselage and a Walter 509 rocket motor underneath the tailpipe. The leading edge of the 26.2 feet span wing has moderate sweep back, but the trailing edge is almost straight. Alternative armament combinations comprise two MG-151 20 millimeters and two MK-108s, or one MK-103, or four MG-213s. The maximum speed at mean weight is 516 miles per hour at 20,000 feet. With the rocket in operation, the aircraft will climb to 38,000 feet in 1.92 minutes from a standing start, the maximum rate of climb being 25,000 feet per minute. If no rocket fuel is carried, the maximum range is 800 miles, but the time of climb to 36,000 feet is then 24 Point seven minutes. TA-183 Single Jet Fighter This single-seat fighter was submitted for the Single Jet Fighter competition as Falkwolf Project 1 and was about to go into production when the war in Europe ended. It was designed for the Heinkel HE-011 jet unit, but in the first production series, the Junkers UMO-004 would have been employed, as supplies of the more powerful Heinkel Hearth units would not have been available. Of mid-wing design, the main plane is swept back at 40 degrees at quarter cord. The fuselage is rather deep to accommodate the turbojet unit which is mounted in the lower rear portion with a straight intake extruding to the nose. The pilot's cockpit is above the intake and well forward. A very sharply swept back fin also fulfills the function as a tail boom, and the swept back tail plane is mounted at its extremity. The armament, with the optional addition of two MK-108s or two MK-103s, is mounted in the nose at the sides of the intake. The main wheels retract forward and upward into the fuselage, and the nose wheel retracts rearward and is stowed nearly flat in a space beneath the intake. Throughout the design, considerable attention has been paid to ease of construction. For example, the wing is of wood construction with a steel box spar, and a single sheet of plywood forms the covering for all that portion of the wing in front of the spar. Fuel tanks are incorporated in the wings as part of the structure. Wing area, 242 square feet. Span, 32.8 feet. Aspect ratio, 4.45 to 1. Maximum flying weight, with 525 gallons of fuel, 11,200 pounds. Wing loading at maximum flying weight, 46.4 pounds per square foot. Maximum speed at sea level, 543 miles per hour. Maximum speed at 23,000 feet, 597 miles per hour. Maximum speed at 39,500 feet, 574 miles per hour. Rate of climb at sea level, 4,470 feet per minute. Rate of climb at 20,000 feet, 3,200 feet per minute. Ceiling, 47,200 feet. Range at 23,000 feet with 315 gallons of fuel. With full thrust, 615 miles. Endurance at 23,000 feet with 315 gallons of fuel. At full thrust, 1 hour 6 minutes. Bomb load, 
1,500 kilograms, or one bomb or torpedo. The Falkenwolf, TA-183, lived on in a couple of different guises. Kurt Tank went to Argentina and convinced Juan Perón's government to build a version of the TA-183. It was called the Polqui, which means arrow. Five prototypes were built. Two of them crashed. The Soviets found a roll of microfilm when they ransacked the Reichsluftfahrt Ministerium building, and from that they designed the MiG-15, which shows a strong family resemblance. The present tense has been used for convenience in the following contexts. However, this does not mean that an aircraft is in existence or that one was ever built.